Hey everyone, this is Jan, game creator and currently the artist of the upcoming Metroidvania Glitchion. So about a week ago I uploaded a speed paint video of one of the major set pieces in Glitchion called Neolite City. For having such a small YouTube channel that video did fairly well. So with this video I want to talk to you a little bit about how I went from these basic shapes to this fully rendered and somewhat realistic cityscape. So let's just watch the video at half speed and talk about the process that I went through along the way. So what you're seeing here is me just blocking out the basic shapes and the silhouettes of the buildings based on a little sketch that I did beforehand. The sketch is really not that complex, but it doesn't need to be as it gets the idea of the city across. So now that I liked the overall composition and the shapes, I could go into the first building and paint in some windows. I pretty much went building by building for this, and the first one was certainly one of the most difficult ones because I didn't really know what I was doing yet. But I went ahead with it, put some gradient on there to make it a little more grounded, some color correction, and I was pretty much ready to go for the next one. So this right here in a few seconds, yeah, this was kind of an interesting moment for me because I discovered that I could just paint one window and map it across the whole building. And that turned out to be just way more economical than painting in every single window. And it actually made it look a little better. So I kept doing that for the remaining buildings as well, pretty much. It's sort of like applying it a texture to a 3D model in a way. It's uh, very similar to 3D art. You just paint one set of uh, texture, then you make it seamless, you tile it across the whole surface and uh, warp it around and it just works. Here I painted the next building first before finishing the first one uh, with the reflections because the reflection of this building should actually appear in the building that is right next to it, so I wanted to get it done first. Here I'm painting in some reflections. Basically, the reflections are just an additive shape uh, but with an additive layer but just some blobs that kind of resemble the environment that I imagine there would be around the city. So the next one, I just copied the same textures again. This helps with the timing, of course, for, for me, so I don't have to spend so much time on it, but also it just makes everything look a little more coherent. Then I painted some reflections again. This one got a little white frame, which helped it to get a kind of cool and modern look. So this is a really weird building in a way. I don't really know what I was going for, but I guess the round shapes kind of help to make it stand out a bit and have a nice shape contrast from the otherwise pretty angular shapes. With this building, I was trying to go with a pretty urban vibe, kind of like a bit of a modern city block that you could also see in uh, modern cities, like for example in Berlin or something like that and uh, yeah, gave it some white panels and stuff. And now we go to the building that I call the Cathedral, which is kind of like, it's a massive uh, building, sort of like the church of the city, but uh, in, the, in this futuristic style. It has kind of a polygonal shape aesthetic to it, um, sort of again a bit like um, a 3D model, just putting all those textures on there, one by one, surface by surface, and again, I was just using the same texture again that I had already prepared for the building that I did earlier. So it really helps to get that consistency, that uh, consistent look across the whole city that way. To separate the surfaces, I put some gradients onto the cathedral and then it's just the reflections again. Just an additive layer basically with some generic blobs. And this building, this next one, was actually pretty interesting after applying some basic shading. I had to put these textures on there again, but this time I had to kind of warp them around these rounded shapes, which made for a pretty interesting challenge, because uh, in addition to just uh, having them on an overlay layer, they have to kind of fit onto the rounded shapes that are be below them, and you can't just distort, you have to actually use the warp tool for that. And that's pretty much it for the buildings, just adding a gradient here and there, and uh, th there we go, it's the top part done. Now we can go to the bottom, making the platform here, just some basic shapes at first again, then we're gonna put in some lighting, some shading, and I tried to apply a little bit of a Fresnel effect here, where the sides are being uh, lit more, or are reflecting more the, the environment, this, this blue environment that the city is uh, floating in. 
And there I go for the elements at the bottom here. Uh, all those individual pieces also need shading, of course. Here I'm trying to go for a kind of a modern look again, like keeping a similar material as the uh, modern white panel kind of buildings at the top. So it all has some visual consistency, uh, making this one black to stand out in contrast to the white one. And then just giving this a kind of metallic look, uh, which you can achieve by like adding these really sharp highlights around the edges. And we're going for this next building, giving it a little bit more of a concrete, angular look. I was going a little bit of uh, for like s some brutalism there. Um, again, applying some window textures the same way I was used to, but by this point, um, some reflections onto those, make them uh, blend in with the rest. Just this little thing on the side here, and we're pretty much done with uh, the shading for the main parts. And now it, what, what I did was just taking all of those buildings that I had done and putting them in the background and fading all of their textures so they don't look like copies and they also blend in nicely with the backgrounds um, and uh, fading them all into this kind of blue. And I added uh, some lights that I painted into a separate layer that is additive because they're lights and um, this layer I, I Use the burn and dodge tools a little bit here and there to give it some rhythm and make some lights appear a little brighter and some a little darker. I also uh, duplicated each layer and put a Gaussian blur filter onto them and uh, merged the layers so they kind of have this glow effect to them. Um, here fading in the ground a little bit and putting some fog layers in front of and behind the buildings to separate kind of like the city layers as I just duplicated the same layout over and over again. And yeah, you can just duplicate it, no one notices. Um, yeah, and here I just kind of copied uh, that one little tank bit uh, because one looked kind of derpy and lonely. And now we're going for these um, flashlights, these like big uh, lights that are kind of being animated later on in the, in the game and I was going for some branding because this is kind of all within this world of the forum and the forum is kind of uh, this mega corporation this uh, huge social media network and they kind of built this virtual city so they have their branding and their logos all over the place just a little bit of uh, visual storytelling there And now we come to the final part, as I am kind of like painting in all these individual city lights. It was just kind of a lot of busy work because every single building has like three lighting layers because I wanted to animate them in the engine later on. And um, yeah, so I painted in on, an, on three additive layers, individual windows onto these buildings, basically working like with selections and then just like one by one painting in these windows, these lights. And uh, yeah, it took a while, but I think the result looks pretty great. Sometimes I paint it on multiple layers on, over the same window and that gives it a little bit of uh, rhythm, visual rhythm, a bit of uh, variety again, uh, where some windows are brighter than others. But yeah, that's pretty much it, just painting in some dots and bits on the windows. And there we go, that's uh, pretty much it, like just for the bottom. And we have our city pretty much complete. So there you go, now you know how I made that asset. I got a lot of new viewers and subscribers from that recent collaboration that I did with Blackthorn Prod and Jonas Tyrola, so big shout out and thanks to them for featuring me in their videos. And if you liked this video and would like to see more similar videos in the future, consider hitting the subscribe button and I might do more of these videos sometime soon. Also, if you're now interested in the game that I made this asset for, Glitchion, and want to chat with the devs directly, you can join our Discord. The link to that is in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Today we shall make a sacrifice.